Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our uh, Back to Basics lesson number five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the CPT journey that we can all follow on the website. You want to go to pattern-collections.com right there. Make sure you got the dash in there, pattern-collections.com. We're going to scroll down. Instead of going to pattern focus like we normally do, we're going to go down here to write-ups. That's where you want to find, if you want to follow along. And we are going to do the beginner's guide. Okay? And we're going to do this one, the creative pattern tangling journey. It's a free online course. So we're going to follow it. And I'm not going to read everything here to you. You can read this for yourself. But um, this was a journey she did back. Ina did this journey back in 2018, I want to say. When was this? Does it say when this was? Right up. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, it might not. It might not. Anyways, in any case, this is where we're headed. We're going to follow this journey. And the Creative Pattern Tangling Journey is specifically written for people who already know how to do patterns. Okay, this is to expand your horizons, so to speak. So I've already uh, covered, you know, back to basics and your supplies and how to read a pattern and what is CPT. And um, at this point, we're going to assume that you've practiced some patterns, you know how to read patterns, you know how to draw a basic pattern all on your own. You know, we're going to assume that. So every week, she says she was going to, she posted a lesson to slowly introduce you to the world of creative and pattern tangling. There's no rush. You can join at any time. Obviously, we're joining many years later. Um, but you can just follow along in this journey on your own. We're going to go straight through this whole thing. There's eight parts. So the first part is going to be this one. Part one. Oh, I see. It was uh, posted on May 31st, 2018. Okay, so it's almost three years ago. So, all you, all, the only requirement for this journey is that, that you know how to follow a pattern and a step out. So grab some scrap paper. This is important. We want to do this on scrap paper. We're not going to be doing anything on a serious piece of art. We're just using scrap paper. So the paper I'm using to to play with, I've taken some just regular uh, printer computer paper, thin, and I've cut it in half so my sheets aren't too terribly big. So I've got a half a piece of paper. That's what I'm going to play with, okay? So the first thing we're going to learn about is base patterns. Base patterns are the structures from which you many uh, patterns originate. The, the most common base pattern that we have is the square grid. Simple square grid. Okay, we all know how to draw a square grid. At this point, vertical lines, horizontal lines, boom, square grid. But you can also do square grids in with curves. They don't have to be square square. The next one is a diamond grid. And to draw a diamond grid, You'll draw lines across this way. Can, can you see that? No. Yeah, I got a, quite a bit of glare. Let me let me close my curtain. Oh, that helps. Okay. So you'll draw lines across this way, and then you can do this a, a variety of ways. You can draw this line straight down like this, and then this one across like this, or you can do a zigzag and then come back and do a zigzag going the opposite way. Whatever is the easiest way for you to get the job done. And then that's the uh, grid variation of it 
would be to do these lines in pencil so that you can erase them and end up with diamond shapes, okay? Or you can also do it on a wavy grid. So I'm gonna show you how we can draw those different things. Um, and then there's the hex grid. I have, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to completely 100% admit to the fact that I have a heck of time drawing a, a hex grid. It's not my favorite grid to draw. I just, I have just troubles with it. I do. I have um, found a variety of different ways to draw it. I still, no matter what I do, struggle. I do struggle. Um, this is one way to draw a hex grid. There are a couple others that I find a little bit easier, but none of them for me are easy. I just, I just struggle with it. So I'm going to quickly draw a few grids just so you can see. I'm going to turn on my light. Zoom out a bit. For the grids, I'm just going to use my pencil. Actually, I'm going to change to a darker pencil so you guys can see it. Let's let's use this one. So for a regular square grid, obviously you just do like that. And it can be uh, less structured like I've just done here. You can be very precise. You can use your ruler and make very precise squares. Um, you can make some curves to it. It's still a square grid. Um, other ways you can make curves is to do like that. Still a square grid. Um, You know, really wavy. Still a square grid. You can draw that the same pattern inside this one, this one, this one, and this one. Get different results based on how you do your grid. Okay. The next one is the diamond grids. Um, I'll do it this way because that's so you can see better. Well, like I said, make yourself your, your spacing, right? And then you can either do it like this with the zigzags, or you can just draw the whole line like this. Either way gets the job done. And then it looks like, I wanna see how she did this wavy one cause I've never done a diamond grid in a wavy thing. She must have done the zigzag. So let's try it. Let's do a wavy, well that's kind of thin, but. Okay, and now let's do the zigzag. Like that, and then come up to there and down and up to there. And these kind of come to the middle here, right? Kind of to the middle of there. And then these will come this way into the middle. Like that. That's pretty crazy, but you could still follow the pattern and put whatever the pattern is that goes into a diamond grid into this. That would look completely different, really bring on the challenge. If, you, if you're getting bored with the standard grid, absolutely do that one. And then the hexagon one. This is my most challenging one, the, the main thing here is to do a zigzag like 
like so. And then one not touching. That's kind of opposite. And then do these lines thusly. And then again, here, not touching. Should be spaced better. And then like that. But I've also found that there's a way to do it where you can draw the lines. Like if you have a simple, in order to get your spacing better, a simple little bit of grid like this, just, just to get your spacing. And you do a line here, and then a line here, a line here, a line here. So every other, like a brick. Okay, and then no, that's not right. That is not right. Oh, I remember now. See, I knew something was not correct. Let's let's just turn it over. Uh, we're on scrap paper. It doesn't matter. You do a double line. Right, and then you do one here, one here, like that. Yes, and then you go from here to there. You bring that zigzag like that. Does that make some sense? I find this one much easier to draw, so I had to do those double lines. And then you get that honeycomb shape. Okay, so that's the other type of grid. Now that we've completed grids, According to this, we're going to turn off our light so we can see that because reflections. Okay. Oops, what did I do? I touched on something. Okay, so now we're going to explore how applying the different fill options can change a base pattern. So you're going to start with one of the base patterns up above at any of those three options. Here she started with the um, regular square grid. And then pick any of the above paste patterns and fill the sections with lines. Simple. Okay, here she's filled in diagonally every other one like a checkerboard. Can you see that? I gotta get it bigger. Like a checkerboard. And then and the other ones go this way and you end up with that. Okay, now in this one, she's just done half on the lower right corners. And then she's turned it. Oh, she's done every other square also. Every other square on the lower left, lower right corner. And then on the other squares, she's done the upper right corner. Just some lines, and it's turned out like that. And then you can shade, and that will also give it a different look. Okay, this one, she's done, oh, I'll do these two together. This one, she's done a square, like an aura, inside. This one, she's done an L-shaped aura inside. And then she's just continued that in, on, okay? And you end up with that. And then you can shade and end up with that. And as you play with those base patterns, you can find that you've already created your own pattern based on how you fill it in and how you shade. And now here's another one where there's a, another base pattern that was created using the above technique. Here is this one called T. And then you can 
just do this little diagonal and this like this. Just make a T kind of in the corner, kind of like an umbrella. It's a base pattern that can be modified in various ways. Here it is uh, just done just like this in every square, but shaded. So it looks like that. This one, can you find it? It's been rotated. It's here and here, and then it's here and here, and then here and there, here and there. Rotated and colored. Here's one called Spike, also done in a square grid with just a V shape. And depending on how you do the V shape, if you do them all going the same direction, it looks like this. If you do them all rotating, it looks more like a starburst. Okay, so <coughs> she wants us to practice that. That's the first thing. There's like two lessons in here. So the first thing she wants us to do is practice that. I've already made myself a lovely, great big um, grid. This is a full uh, printer paper size. Um, and I've done a grid on this side and I've done a diamond grid on this side. I did not, I left that pencil, well it's not pencil, I actually did it in gray pen, but I left it so that we can decide whether or not we're going to use that line or, or just do the diamond shape. But I'm just going to do this, I'm going to just grab a pen and we'll just play with some some lines here like she did. So we can just do like these. We could do the whole thing like that. We don't even have to do every other one and twist it and turn it. We can just do like this. That's one way to just play with the lines. If we want to, we could color these ones in. I'm not going to fill it in solid. We're in, okay, that would that would make it look one way. Um, if we if we decide we're going to do a curve in here, That looks completely different. Than that, but it's a similar um, idea. But we're doing a curve. And I didn't do the curve the same in each one. Because I'm just playing. So I'm not spending a whole lot of time thoughtfully drawing my lines like I would if I was doing a, uh, a piece of art. Um, there's that T. So let's do that T shape. Like this. And then we can do it like this. And we can do it like this. And then like this going into the different corners. And if we could rotate it like she did, or we could just do this pattern again and follow it exactly the way we just did it. And now that kind of looks like overlapping envelopes. So then we could shade in here. Right? Or we could do something else. We could do that one and then come in here and do stripes going this way. Right? Just doing them fast because I don't want this to last forever. But you get the you get the idea. You take a pattern and then just kind of change it up. 
Um, then she's got that spike one, which is basically a V shape. Oops, I didn't go into the corner. Oh well. Basically a V shape. And in order to get it down into that corner, since I goofed up, I'm just going to do that. See, now it's got an aura. Okay. So that that's just a way we can play. Take your time and play with different patterns, different things that we can do. And now she wants to show us a technique called folding. So a technique called folding has, um, this is where it's shown in a square grid. And basically, you go one way and then the other way. And then one way, the other way. And so it ends up looking like a folded corner. Can you see that? And it's very simple to do. Here it is filled in in the square and shaded. Right? Here it is going all one direction. Here it is going different directions on each line. And then there is, here it is doing it in a diamond. So starting with the top and then the side, then the top, then the side until it's all filled in. Can you see that? And then there's also a technique. This is single fold and this is folded. This one I call log cabin because this is what reminds me of like Lincoln logs and log cabin drawing is one, two, and then three, four, going all the way around the shape, just following it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, following it around until it looks like this. It's a, it's a very, um, common patchwork quilt shape. If you do it in a wonky grid, it looks completely different. Those are fun. Here it is not finished all the way to the middle and leaving that middle to, to be colored in. And here it is in the hex grid. So I want to play with a little bit of that over here in the diamond grid. I'm going to turn my light back on. And we can just play with a variety of things, you know. Um, let's do, let's do, do regular folded. I don't have my lines lined up quite right there. Let me try it on this side. I've got it. I was better on this side. Okay, so let's do regular single fold here. I'm going to do it in a triangle, in the, the full triangle, like that. There. And there. And then there. There, here, and here. Like that. And then I'm going to do it on this side, going the other way though. I'm going to go this way and then this way. So it ends up with that interesting shape. And then if we did it again here, let's try that. We're going to start here. 
Where do I want my second one? Do I want it here? Or do I want it here? I don't know. Because I don't know what it's going to do. I want it here. That's very interesting. Okay, so uh, I want to do it this way, right? This way and that way. Ooh, that's neat. That makes it a really interesting pattern. And then maybe over here, I'm going to do it like I did here, which was what? What was first? What did I do first? I did this one first. And then that one. So I want to do it the other way. I'm going to turn it. This one. Right? I'm trying to think. It was this one, then that one. Okay. So it was this one and this one. Okay. This one and this one. This one and this one. And these are the ones that are considered single fold, the ones that I'm doing right now. But she wants us to be aware of the terminology so when she says do it folded, we'll have an idea of what that means. That came out really cool. Look at that. I like that. And then we could we could shade that. Right in there. That's cool. I like how that turned out. That's cool. Okay, let's play with something else. Let's play with regular folded. All the way around. Why is the wind blowing? I'm going to go ahead and color that middle part in. What the heck? And then it looks like that. 
we can just play and play and play with these techniques. Um, and so what I've done is this page that I'm that I made this this one here with the uh, regular grid and the diamond grid I've scanned it and I've made a, a Google document that I will put a link in the description below um, to these two shapes and um, if you want to just play with a variety of patterning whether you play with folded or you just play with um, some interesting things to do with pattern in these shapes uh, go for it I'm thinking maybe uh, you know let's let's play with um, with lines curvy lines like this I made you very far away. You didn't probably see a whole lot of what I was doing. Um, I'm going to turn it this way. There we go. Like that. That makes for an interesting pattern now, doesn't it? Let's do that again. You take the basic shapes that we learned in uh, one of the first lessons, second lesson, Lesson number two, basic shapes, curvies, and you know I'm not being super precise with this, which is obvious. I just want to see what it would look like with a curvy line in it. It looks cool. And then you could say, well, what if, what if then I put a a teardrop here. That makes it for something different, once again, right? And what if we put dots around that teardrop? There you go. Now I've created a pattern. Right? So I want you to play on the next uh, couple of days before we meet again. Um, either draw your own grids, which is what I would, would uh, encourage you to do. But if you don't want to, you don't have the time, um, you know, print out mine and you'll have a square grid and you'll have a diamond grid and you'll have uh, some opportunity to play with uh, various shapes. Now my diamond grid, because of the way I drew it, ends up being squares. Um, if you want a more diamondy grid, I would, I would do my, um, here, let me do it real quick. And then I would do a, a little bit steeper of an angle. I don't know how far away I am, so I'm not gonna not gonna measure. I'm just gonna eyeball. Of course, you could do this just as it is as a as a square grid, right? And then do 
take this steeper angle. Like that. And now you have them different. If you were to do just the diamond portion, you have a much different shape here than what I did. I ended up with a square because I didn't, I didn't do quite the right angles. But you can end up with that shape there. And then you could do a pattern in here, every other one that matches. You could do one pattern in here, and then you could do a different pattern in here. And then you can do this pattern again in here. See what I mean? And then this pattern in here, like so. Anyways, that's, that's it. That's it for basic lesson number five. CPT journey lesson number one is basic shapes. What was it called? What did she call it? I have already forgotten. She called today's lesson part one, base patterns and folded technique. Those are the two things. Just take your time, play, practice. You got a couple of days. Uh, today is a Wednesday. We will be back for a basics CPT journey on Monday. So you have the weekend to play with a variety of things and see what fun stuff you come up with. Share with me over at uh, Facebook at Draw Tangles with Dawn and um, and, and, and I hope that you are really enjoying this journey. I know I'm enjoying uh, going back to the basics. I know that I, I know stuff because I've been doing this for so long. But, you know, it's always good to revisit the um, basics. And I'd never done this before. That, that I'm going to do again in, in a journey journal somewhere because that came out really cool. I like it. Anyway, you guys have a great day. I will see you on the next video. I'm just going to zoom in here so I have something interesting for a thumbnail. And um, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.